Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. We're having a few technical difficulties today, but the devil is alive, and we will rejoice, and we will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We'll now have a musical selection from our minister of music. We welcome him back, and we just thank God that he is still in the healing business. Mm -hmm. God never fails. God never fails. He abides in me. He gives me victory. For God never fails. Just keep the faith and never cease to pray. Till the day, there's no need to worry about God. Never fail, Lord. God never fail. God never fails. He abides with me. He gives me victory. Oh God. sit high and look low, but you never overlook any of your children. Through it all, you have loved us even when we were unlovable. Oh, what a mighty God you are. And it is a joy to worship you 
in spirit and in truth. Now, Lord, we ask that you move among us today. Let your Holy Spirit speak to our spirits. Encourage us, empower us to go forth and make our space a little better so that your name will be glorified, so that your people may be edified, and that the world will know that we serve a risen Savior. Now, Lord, have your way here today. Move in this place. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, it is a joy to be here, even in the midst of this peculiar season. And we know that God is still sitting high, looking low, but he never overlooks any of his children. And we just give him praise, glory, and honor. I'd like to lift up a few verses from one of my favorite songs, uh, one that has blessed me and my family down through the years. And I just want to lift up a few verses from the book of Psalms, Psalm 37, beginning at the 21st verse. Reading from the New King James translation, you'll find these words. The wicked borrow and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful in lands, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore, for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. I've just read from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 37, Psalm or verses 21 through 29. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the word of God. And we will have another selection to come forth at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord. This song is for our children's choir. I know there's our children's choir looking at us on video. I want to just thank the Lord for all our children that we have. So this song here is for you.
my brother. I'm telling you, I'm missing them, young folks. We're missing y'all. Yes, Amen. yes, hallelujah. But just a little while, if we just hold on for a little while longer, we will be on the other side of this situation. Amen. So let us stay focused. Let us stay prayerful as we go forth. We want to apologize for our technical difficulties. We've had a lot of rain and whatnot going on, and it has affected our internet service. So we're doing uh, some backup things uh, with our live broadcast. And also, we are videotaping uh, this worship service uh, for later broadcasts on uh, the Tuskegee uh, television uh, network. Also, uh, we will make it available on uh, YouTube, Facebook, or whatever else. Uh, just send us a, a request. If you can't get any of them, we'll send you a direct link because we want to stay connected with you. Uh, we are thankful that God is moving in a mighty way in our midst. Um, things are progressing well uh, with uh, our new construction. And we are looking forward to the time when we can sit down at the welcome table with each and every one of you to break a little bread, maybe a chicken wing or two. Amen. We are looking forward to all that God is doing. Let us uh, keep our bereaved families lifted up in prayer. We want to lift up brother and sister Andrus in the passing of their uh, brother-in-law, Brother Cal Wilson, who was funeralized on yesterday. Uh, let us keep his widow, Sister Kathleen Wilson, lifted up in our prayers as they make this journey through the valley of the shadow of death. And then I know some of you all are just as shocked as I was to hear the passing of Chadwick Boseman, uh, the actor who uh, played in the top grossing his film in the history of Hollywood, who uh, played the lead in Black Panther. Uh, that film grossed over a billion dollars at the box office. And, and please understand, I'm not saying it because the money is important. I'm saying it because the impact that that movie had on people of color throughout the world, that it dared us to dream again. Even when we seem to be in the middle of a national nightmare, we can still dream, realizing that with God, all things are possible. Amen. So let us keep our communities lifted up in prayer. Let us keep our elected officials lifted up in prayer. Whether you agree with them or not, the Bible says pray for those in authority over you that it may go well for God's people. And for years I struggled with that. Lord, why should I pray for somebody I don't agree with? Because even when they make bad decisions, God has demonstrated from the beginning of time that he can change folks' minds. So we are trusting God that he will do what is necessary. And even when bad decisions are made, God has a way of watching over his people and keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. But that still doesn't relieve us of our obligation to lift up those in authority over us, that it may go well with God's people. So please, sir, please, ma'am, let us remain prayerful. Let us watch and pray as we go through this peculiar season. Uh, we are just uh, thankful for those who went to the polls this past Tuesday, and we are hoping that you will go back to the polls and vote in the runoff. We don't tell you who to vote for, we just tell you vote. People died that you may have the right to vote. There are those who suffered indignity and loss of fortune because they dare to have the audacity to say, I will vote. I grew up in a, a community that didn't get to vote until 1960. And I know a lot of folks saying, where were you living? In Washington, D.C. Washington did not vote in a presidential election until 1960. 
Up until that point, the representative government in Washington was appointed by the folks on Capitol Hill, and people had no say in their direction, no say in their future, no input. So don't take it for granted. This is a fundamental right of being an American, the right to vote. Because our vote matters, our voice matters. So please, sir, please, ma'am, let us vote. Let us exercise this franchise that we have been entrusted. Also, let us remain prayerful in these communities where violence has taken place where protests are going on, and unfortunately, some folk don't like peaceful protests. But that doesn't mean we stop protesting. Right is right and wrong is wrong on both sides. If it's wrong, call it wrong. Amen. If it's right, stand for right. Amen. And at the end of the day, God's going to straighten all of it out. But not if we just sit back and allow it to take place. We have to stand up and hold each other accountable. That's what a free society does. We hold, we lift each other up. We hold each other accountable. And we may be the people that God has created us to be. So that's all I want to share with you today. There is a word that we want to continue with, a word of encouragement, a word that we pray will bless you as we continue in this peculiar season in which we find ourselves. Um, I want to lift up a few verses from the passage of Scripture that we have been speaking from in the month of August. Um, and we're talking about the first epistle of Peter. And I want to lift up a few verses uh, in your hearing at this time from 1 Peter the first chapter, beginning at the ninth verse, you will find these words reading from the New King James translation, and it reads as follows. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, who was in them, was indicating when, his, when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look unto. I've just read from the first epistle of Peter, the first chapter, the ninth through the twelfth verses. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the word of God. We're going to ask Brother Frazier to give us another selection at this time, after which we will have today's message. Lord, I worship you. 
because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Mm. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, you're my prince of peace, Lord, I worship you, cause of who you are. to read in your hearing from the first epistle of Peter and it reads at the eighth verse 
whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I want to talk a little today about the salvation of our souls. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory and we praise you. We thank you for watching over us, for bringing us safely thus far. We thank you for this appointed hour in which you have extended the grace to allow me to stand behind the sacred desk to break the bread of life. I acknowledge that I am not worthy, but all that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I surrender to you to do with as you see fit. Lord, speak to me, speak through me, for your people need to hear from you. Let a word go forth that will encourage them through the vicissitudes of life, realizing that you promise never to leave us or forsake us. And you promise to be with us always, even to the end of the age. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as we come forth in the midst of this peculiar situation, one of the things that we tend to overlook, that we tend to forget from time to time, that God has saved us. You see, salvation is the most important consideration for every person. The very thought that our faith will result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed fills us with an inexpressible joy, a glorious joy. And when we look at the goal of our faith, ultimately is wonderful consummation will be the ultimate salvation of our souls. Now, I know folks say, well, I thought we were already saved when we confessed and believed. Yes, you were saved from the penalty of sin. We are being saved daily from the power of sin. But when we come into the completeness through the revelation of Jesus Christ, I, uh, for example, when he comes back to reign here on earth, and, and we who are here, those who have gone on will be caught up to meet him in the air and be with him forever, ultimately, our ultimate salvation is that we won't even be in the presence of sin. To be in a sinless existence that 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 is the the ultimate goal of our salvation you see salvation is also important to god and the salvation of souls was planned in god's heart before the foundations of the world he determined that humans would be created in his spiritual image uh eternal souls who would have freedom of choice and he elected to provide a savior, Jesus Christ, who would live, die, and rise again. Jesus is an adequate savior. And God also elected that everyone who trusts in Jesus as the Son of God will be sanctified by his Holy Spirit that is set apart and sealed, redeemed by the blood of Christ, and kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. What are you, what are you saying, preacher? 
God knew at the beginning of, of, of the foundations of the world that man created in his image, in his likeness, an eternal soul that would live forever with a choice. Realizing that we may make the wrong choice, but even then God in his mercy provided a means by which we could choose to walk away from our bad decisions choose to be with him and that he would seal us into all eternity when we make the right choice. Yes. Now, 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 I know some folks say, well, you know, that, 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 that's kind of egotistical to God. Well, he God. He can be as egotistical yeah, as he want to be. <laughs> Who am I to tell him, God, you ought not be like that? It's just like I, I had a teacher used to, I, I, that little old lady used to make me angry. When, because when I would see it, she said, oh, here comes the fat man. And I'm like, wait a minute, how is, how is she going to pick on me? You act like I sat at home and decided I'm going to be fat. I didn't choose. Circumstances were such. Eventually, I made some choices to, 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 to deliver me from that condition. But God had provided a means realizing that when we made the right decision, that there would be a, a place available for us. What a joy, this gift of salvation. Now, I'm going to put another spin on that. Angels don't have that choice. They didn't get the gift of free will. And that's why when they chose to rebel, there wasn't no comeback. You, you walked away, and now you want to come back? No. What a gift that God has given us. Amen. And, 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 and he talked about this gift. It was uh, provided for us, and it was further reveal throughout scripture from the Old Testament all the way to the end of the New Testament God has made his will known to us. His plan has always been there. You just got to read the instructions. See first of all the salvation of souls was the subject of Old Testament searching and revelation. In, in, in verses 10 through 12, it talked about how the Old Testament prophets prophesied under the influence of the Holy Spirit that, that there were some things that were going to happen. Well, what, what, what revelations did they get? Uh, they, they received the revelation that God would provide his Christ and that he would suffer. They, 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 they reveal that, that, that even in his suffering, he would be glorified. And then by his suffering and his glorification, that Gentiles would be saved. Now, what, what about Jews? Well, see, Jews were the chosen people. They were the vessel by which God chose to bless the world. They didn't realize that being the chosen people, they were chosen not because they were all that. They were chosen to do a job. You know, it's just like in your kitchen. You got knives. And when you get ready to cut stuff, when you get ready to cut some bread, you get a bread knife. When you're getting ready to carve uh, some meat, you get a butcher knife. When you're getting ready to eat steak, you get a steak knife. It's not that one knife is better than the other, but they are chosen for a specific task. The children of Israel were chosen to bring salvation into the world, but they figured, I'm all that. I'm the best one. I'm, I'm better than you because I'm chosen but they forgot what they were chosen to be. So the prophets had to remind them that through you, the world would be blessed. Not only the chosen folk, but everybody. That's God's gift of salvation because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, well where, where did Peter get the 
this message from that he was sharing. He went back there with them Old Testament prophets. Peter got it when he was in the upper room when Jesus, who just got up from the dead, preached to the disciples. He shared some things with them. He, he taught them some things that they didn't get when he was on earth. They were so busy worrying about an earthly kingdom. Jesus had to die, go to the grave, and get up again. Now that I have your attention, let me tell you the stuff that I couldn't tell you before because you couldn't even handle when I told you I had to die. Now that I've died, I got up, I'm back. Now let me give you the rest of it. And the rest of it was, you have to go into all the world baptizing them, making disciples, and remember, I'm going to be with you always, even to the end. Amen. Well, well what, 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 what did Jesus, Jesus tell them in the upper room? He told them, I told you that the Christ had to suffer. He said, said I, 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 I told you that, 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 that uh, 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 the Christ would be glorified. I told you that Gentiles, as a result, would be saved. That's the same thing the prophet said. You see, when we look at this revelation, the, the nature of the revelation in the Old Testament, the prophets searched diligently. They realized that there was a lot of stuff that they were told that didn't make sense to them. Lord, I don't understand it. Write it down anyway. They, they, they were aware that while they were speaking in their generation, they were also speaking to generations yet born. Every time we sing the Negro National Anthem, I, 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 when we get to that God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has kept us safe thus far along the way, guide us, Lord, by thy might into your marvelous light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. I, I like that part. But the next verse is the one that gets me when it says, Lest our feet stray from the path, my God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. James Weldon Johnson wrote this in a time where segregation was the rule. He wrote this at a time that black folks didn't have access to everything that we have today. He wrote this at a time where we couldn't go to school where we wanted to. We couldn't live where we wanted to. We couldn't eat where we wanted to. We couldn't do anything that we wanted to because society had put barriers up. But yet he looked and saw a day when all this would be available to us and he said, Lord, don't let us stray from the path. Amen. These Old Testament prophets, when, 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 when they were speaking to the present generation, they knew they had to speak to future generations. And, and, and the details and the times and the exact conditions were, were not revealed to them. All they knew it was coming. The Old Testament prophets did not seem to distinguish between the second and the first or the beginning or the end uh, when the Messiah was going to come the first time or when he was going to come back. They just broke down what was given to them. They didn't understand it, but they figured somebody will figure it out by and by. Amen. They knew that at the end of the day when this was fulfilled, that, 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 that there were many things that weren't clear to them and aren't clear to us, but God's looking at a big picture. And things that don't make sense to us now, when Jesus comes in his fullness, it will all be understood. It will be understood why we got to go through this turmoil and unrest right now. Why we got to deal with a pandemic. And then these countless demonstrations. And for the life of me, if everybody looking at you, it seems to me that common sense would be whatever you do, don't go shoot no black men in the back. Amen. 
Right or wrong, just don't shoot. It's just, just not a good look. Common sense would say avoid your your avoid some of this anguish, avoid some of this scrutiny, avoid some of this trouble. Just don't shoot nobody. Amen. But yet we still getting getting folks shot in the back. And some folks are thinking, oh, it'll all go away. No, it ain't. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm off on a tangent there. All right, you see, you see, God, God knew that that, that 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 there was a bigger picture. For example, Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 7, 14 through 17, that had an immediate reference to King Ahaz, but God also had in mind a fulfillment with the reference to Jesus that was not in Isaiah's mind. As Matthew explained, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and we will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Isaiah said that to King Ahaz, it was dealing with a situation right then. But God was thinking 600 years down the road that he was going to choose a virgin to be with child. Everybody knew that, but that ain't Joseph's baby. They say it's of the Holy Ghost, but yet his name was Yeshua, Emmanuel. God is with us. God took on flesh and became a man and dwelled among us and we beheld his glory. Amen. It didn't make sense at the time. It didn't make sense to Isaiah. But Matthew said, you know what? This is what God said something like this back 600 years ago. And now we see similar situations. See, I don't believe in coincidence. Even 600 years later, I don't believe in coincidence. That was under the Old Testament. In, in the New Testament, salvation of souls is, 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 is the subject of, of New Testament preaching. That's why we preach. God uses certain people to preach the gospel just as in times past, he used certain people to prophesy. The prophets prophesied about what was coming Preachers preach about what has come. Amen. Salvation is available to us. Amen. The Holy Spirit assists preachers as they proclaim this message, just as the Holy Spirit assisted those prophets. Those prophets were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when they wrote it down. And I like to think that when we yield ourselves to God and we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that God uses us to reach and teach and touch somebody. Us with all of our brokenness, us with all of our sins, us with all of our shortcomings. And God kind of works through all of that and says, so, you know, if I can use this, Because it's not the messenger, it's the message. And the message is God has provided. Amen. The message of the prophets and the message of preachers is the same, that the suffering and the glory of the Christ. No cross, no crown. And the purpose of both prophecies lead to the same thing that God wants to save mankind. Yeah, yeah. So that was the Old Testament, that was the New Testament. But, 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 but also let's look at the angels. According to Peter, angels are interested in God's plan. See, note that, that, that Paul's affirmation of angelic interest, he says, we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe to angels as well as human beings. Well, what are you saying, preacher? Put a pen right there. They are looking at us. They are, are watching us. Some of them probably sitting back and saying, look at them fools. They're just messing over. Well, how great and glorious God is. That's why when, when, when chaos jumps up, I'm, I'm of the opinion. This is Reverend Jones' opinion. When chaos breaks out among the body of Christ, 
I'm of the opinion, based on what I've read in Scripture, that God will withdraw his angels until we stop, repent, and, and walk away from that sin. Well, why does he withdraw his angels? Because he don't want them picking up no bad habits. Because, see, we have choice. They do not. And see, they might be sitting there thinking, you know, if we did that, we'd be kicked out. That's what happened with Satan. Satan's like, wait a minute, hold it. How you going to kick us out? Just because we did a little revolt. Yeah, we made a mistake. No, you got to go. Satan's charge was, well, you know, you ain't fair. Because you give folks a choice, they'll choose not to worship you. God said, okay, check this out. Boom, I made man in my image and my likeness. Man has free will. Man has choice. And we're going to see what they're going to choose. And until the end of his existence, one of Satan's uh, ministries, if you will, is to accuse the saints. Amen. Well, how do you know that, preacher? That's what he did to Job. Frankly, I think God set him up. If you consider my servant Job, he's an upright man who does good, it's you evil. He's 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 all right. Yeah, you take all his stuff, he'll curse you to your face. Okay, take his stuff. And then when Satan comes back again, did you have you considered my servant Job? An upright man who, who uh, does good and eschews evil and, and, and maintains his integrity, even though you accuse him to me. Yeah, okay, but if you take his, his health, he'll curse you to your face. Okay. You see, what Satan hadn't figured out, you know, as, as, as they used to say in Southeast Washington, that was a sucker bet. Because see, God wouldn't have said, have you considered my servant Job if God hadn't considered him first. Amen. God knew all of God knew the hairs on his head. God knew his deepest thoughts. God knew his upright and his downfalling. God knew everything. And God knew it put to the test that Job was going to come through as pure gold. Amen. The angels are looking at us and and and, 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 and and they're curious to see how we're going to turn out. Because, you know, if we were looking at us, we'd probably figure, right, we do it. We, we, we talk about people. That Negro ain't nothing. He ain't going to never be nothing. And then they turn out to be something. And, and, and you know, I always say, you know, success has many fathers. Because, you know, when, when you make it, everybody wants to be I remember that boy when. I, I like to think I had something to do with that. Okay. okay. But you mess up. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> or the corollary. He was all right when I had some influence on him. I don't know what happened. Amen. I know y'all say, Greg, why are we off on these tangents here? No, 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 no. See, the angels are looking at us because God has made us a spectacle. See, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. And Jesus declared, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Because the angels know what, what, what lies here. See, see we, we, we've heard... And we got inklings of what's, what, what's on the other side for those that don't repent. Angels know. See, some of them were there when, when Satan and them got kicked out. Go, oh, man, I don't want to be in that situation. So they, 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 they were there when, when, when the war came up and they were defeated. They know what lies ahead. And they look at us and think, boy, you just don't know what's going on. You don't know what lies ahead. You know, I'm glad I don't know what the future holds but I'm glad I know who holds the future. If, if I knew what was going to happen, there's some stuff I might choose not to do. If I knew I had to go through some trying times, I might have chosen to do something different. If I knew that I had to cry sometime, I might have chosen to avoid that. If I knew I had to 
to suffer, I might not want to deal with that. But God, in his infinite wisdom, let me know that you got to go through some stuff sometime. He let me know you got to go through some trials and some tribulations. He let me know that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And even in what we're dealing with right now, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know who's going to live or who's going to die. But this I do know, I got somewhere to go because my name was written in the language of my life. I got somewhere to go because Jesus prepared a place for me that where he is, there I'll be also. I got somewhere to go. As the songwriter says, this joy I have, yes. the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away, because I got somewhere to go. Amen. I got a home, and whatever suffering I got to go through down here is nothing compared to what God got in store for me. See, that's why Paul could say, when he had his thorn in the flesh, Lord, remove this thorn. Yes. He said, three times I prayed, take this, this thorn from my flesh. And God told him that my grace is sufficient. For when you are weak, I'm strong. So he said, I learned to glory in my infirmity. And later on, he was able to write, you know, I've learned to be a base. And I've learned to abound. I've learned to have abundance. And I've learned to suffer need. And I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. Amen. See, Peter could write this letter of encouragement because he was there for the highest heights. And he was there for his lowest lows. He was up on the Mount of Transfiguration and saw Jesus step out of time into eternity. And it was so good that he said, let's build some tabernacles and stay here. God told him, shut up. This is my son. Hear him. Oh, what, what heights to be in the room when Jesus raised the child from the dead. But oh, what depths to be sitting around the fire and folks say, you one of them. And he said, I told you I ain't one of them. And then to have the cock crow just like Jesus said he would. Lord, I'll never leave you. But in spite of all that, when Jesus got up, he said, go tell the disciples and Peter to meet me in Jack Galilee. Yeah, Peter been through some stuff. And he knew that on the other side, that God would see him through. God will see you through. He will bring us through this season. Not only that, we got somewhere to go. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give you glory. We praise you, Lord, for this gift of salvation the salvation that will be complete when Jesus comes back and we will meet him in the air. Oh, we give you praise and glory. We thank you, Father. Now, watch over us. Lead us and guide us. Be with us that we may be the people that you've created us to be. That your name be glorified. That your people be edified. We ask it all in Jesus' name.
Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within that reassures as I keep my eyes upon the distant shores I know you'll say relieve me to that blessed place he has prepared Sometimes it's hard to tell 